In today's information age, it's easy to do research with a few simple keystrokes, but it's also incredibly easy to end up with unreliable information that makes your research fruitless. A lot of us use Google just about every day because you get a lot of different websites on the information that you need. And it's usually on the first page. That can sometimes be a problem because anyone can create information on any topic and website information can be biased, unbalanced, outdated, unreliable, or just plain wrong. For example, this seemingly safe search that most people have done in their school years. The first link is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is the most popular site for written sources of information. Now, if this is a school paper and you get some facts right, you should get a good grade, right? Keep in mind that choosing credible sources is vital for any type of research you do, and it influences the way you'll continue to learn and grow. Wikipedia is fine if you want to get a quick sense of the topic. However, you should be cautious about using it for academic research. As it states on their About page, anyone can contribute and edit information. The contributor's credentials or experience on a topic are not taken into consideration, so information can be outdated or posted by someone who's not a topic expert, or may even want to spread misinformation. Take Shane Fitzgerald, for example. In 2009, he posted a fake quote on an article about then-recently deceased composer Maurice Jarre. Fitzgerald wanted to show the potential dangers of journalists relying on the Internet for information. Although his edits were removed three times, they were copied into the obituary columns of major newspapers around the world. Fitzgerald believes if he hadn't come forward, his quote would have remained historical fact. In defense of Wikipedia, they now have a team that looks over the information that someone edits, so the site has gotten better. It's still not advisable to end your search on Wikipedia. Instead, it can be the starting point of your research, where you can find links in the reference section that will take you to where Wikipedia sourced their information and you can visit those sources and get the information yourself. You also have to remember that besides misinformation, contributors can also add and edit information on Wikipedia to suit their own agendas and bias. A scientist from England became a Wikipedia site administrator. He wrote or rewrote over 5,000 articles supporting the concept of global warming. He also blocked over 2,000 contributors with opposing viewpoints and more than 500 articles disappeared when he was copy editor. Diversity is also an issue on Wikipedia. A 2008 survey showed 87% of the information on Wikipedia comes primarily from young white males, averaging 26.8 years, mostly in Europe and North America. Although these contributors might be intelligent and provide factual information, the site lacks diversified points of view. So for now, maybe not ending your search on Wikipedia is the way to go. What's amazing is that we are aware of stranger danger in our everyday lives. We would never drink from an unattended glass or go in a dark alleyway. Yet we willingly trust anyone with any information hosted on Google. Some important questions to ask yourself are, who is taking ownership of this site? What's their agenda? Is the website current, updated? Does the information seem biased, sexist, racist? So when you type a term in a search engine, there's no quick way of telling which of the thousand sites that pop up are credible. Because of this, you need the CRAAP rule for assessing the reliability of websites. C, current. R, relevant. A, authority. A, accuracy. P, purpose. Currency refers to the timeliness of the information. Some questions to ask according to the Merriam Library at California State University Chico are, when was the information published or posted? Has the information been revised or updated? Is the information current or out of date for your topic? Are the links functional? Relevance. Does the information relate to your topic or answer your question? Who is the audience? Is the information at an appropriate level? For example, not too elementary or advanced for your needs? Have you looked at a variety of sources before determining this is one you will use? Would you be comfortable using this source for a research paper or speech? Authority is the source of the information. Who is the author or publisher or source or sponsor? Are the author's credentials or organizational affiliations given? What are the author's credentials or organizational affiliations given? What are the author's qualifications to write on the topic? Is there contact information such as a publisher or email address? Does the URL reveal anything about the author or source? Accuracy refers to the reliability, truthfulness, and correctness of the content. Where does the information come from? Is the information supported by evidence? Has the information been reviewed or refereed?
Can you verify any of the information in another source or from personal knowledge? Does the language or tone seem biased and is it free of emotion? Are there spelling, grammar, or other typographical errors? Purpose is the reason the information exists. What is the purpose of the information? To inform, teach, sell, entertain, persuade? Do the authors or sponsors make their intentions or purpose clear? Is the information fact, opinion, propaganda? Does the point of view appear objective and impartial? Are there political, ideological, cultural, religious, institutional, or personal biases? In order to be an ethical, inclusive communicator, you also want to look at any information you find from an equity lens. One of the key aspects of this assessment is accessibility. Some key questions to ask are, is the information presented in a logical manner? Is there a text-only option? Is the text readable? Does color or a background inhibit use? Is navigating the site intuitive? Do the graphics serve a purpose? Do they help communicate the message? Is there an appropriate use of multimedia? Is the site useful in a non-graphical browser environment? So if the information is crap approved, you are on the right track.